that one or this trucker saw one in Eugene. That, you know, whatever it did, they, 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 they stare at you to intimidate you. And that isn't, they're not, you know, saying hi, you know, I'm here to, you know, help you. It's like they're staring and they're, I hate to say it. Everybody yeah, says they're so ugly. Stares at you. Is it, is it being malevolent? When we look at an owl in the night, I mean, they do stare at you and owls aren't evil. But they give us the, they are spooky because of the way they they make that noise that hoo hoo sound in the dark and they're a night creature they're nocturnal but are they evil just because they stare at us? Well, I can honestly say to something happened to the one we had. We do have owls on my property. You hear them all night long, especially in spring. But I can yeah, tell you, have, the, yeah. the first ten years I lived here, I, I mean, I'd go out any time in the evening off my deck on my porch hanging was probably about a two and a half foot owl and it was just sit there and watch me do its thing it, it loved the dog food we put out and cat food we put out but i mean it was there for years and it it, it, that, it was like its home so i don't know hey, yeah and, and, and these things might be territorial too so again i don't know that we can go by looks to say that something is evil although i do have faith in human intuition uh, when the hackles on the back of your neck rise, when you when you feel a presence and when you shiver, uh, when uh, you get goosebumps, that usually is your body telling you that there is some kind of real and present danger, and there is that gut reaction. And when everyone has it, and, and almost always people describe it as looking horrible or terrible. Now, an octopus looks pretty darn ugly too. But I don't. When I look at an octopus as, uh, as ugly as it is, I don't think of it as evil or malevolent. But apparently these people think that the Mothman is. Now the question arises, is it a demon, or is it at least where all the demon legends come from? We don't know. That's the interesting thing. But I, if it wanted to make contact with us, it's certainly not really trying to make contact in the right way. I mean, to go again, you know, disappear next to a vehicle while a car is moving and stare at you or in a parking lot. It seems that they, they, a lot of these sightings are in creepy, scary places to begin with. Right, and it does bear uh, a resemblance to other creatures of the, of the same ilk, like, again, the Jersey Devil and uh, that sort of thing. But uh, if it weren't malevolent, why is it doing what it's doing? It, it seems to be harassing us at the very minimal but also, what about these strange phone calls that people were getting in Point Pleasant where there were all these strange noises on the line where the, the one man said his TV suddenly went into a herringbone pattern and he couldn't get into reception. And uh, he heard something outside, and that's when he went out with his dog. Uh, it, it isn't just the creature itself. It seems to be an aura of something evil around the creature that's affecting things both mechanical and electrical as well. Uh, there seems to be that strong presence. So... And also, again, we don't know how it can fly, how it can possibly fly. It just seems to defy the laws of physics. It just doesn't seem to have the musculature or the low weight. I mean, a bird has hollow bones. That's what helps it to fly. But uh, this creature doesn't seem, it seems to be quite heavy. The footprints from it are very deeply embedded to the ground as if they were quite heavy or under a big weight. So how is it levitating like that? And again, it's either magical, as you refer to it, or supernatural, as I'd refer to it, or it's some kind of artificial means of levitating that we're not seeing that may be under its clothing or hidden on its body somewhere. That is a possibility. Just to think about it, levitating off, and then the wings come out. And what even the trucker uh, in his email said that it wasn't flapping the wings. It just the wings moved slowly. And it yeah, flew, uh, flew off. off. You get, and, and also, when it levitates, sometimes it'll raise its wings, but it's not flapping them. It's just holding them out. And it just sort of lifts up off the ground, straight up vertical. And how is it doing that if it's not moving its wings? That's the interesting part. And it's something six foot five, seven foot tall, a human, you know, man shaped, would have to weigh probably around 200 and some pounds plus. And, you know, again, like birds, their bones are hollow. They have to flap their wings. I mean, you know, I watched, you know, we get a lot of birds. We get a lot of eagles and all this stuff around where I, on my mini farm. 
and I will have watched how they, you know, land and fly. Whatever these reports are, they're not flapping their wings. Even this one guy was in uh, Texas that one of them flew by his cab window on his truck said that the creature was just barely moving its wings. And so that makes you wonder, does it come from a place where it could fly naturally, like a planet with a much lower gravity, where it wouldn't take so much uh, muscle power to lift it, or such big wings, but on Earth they don't work, so it has to use some kind of device to accomplish the same goal, so that it can still function like it likes to function? I mean, if we landed on a planet that had gravity three times the size of ours, we wouldn't give up walking and, and be crawling across the ground. We would get an exoskeleton mechanized that we're working on right now and use that to help carry us around. So maybe whatever these things are, they're doing the same thing in reverse. Well, maybe what we're seeing is not what we're actually seeing. Maybe, again, I'm just tossing this up. They could be an alien dressed that way or in a a suit of whatever to, you know, to disguise themselves. I don't know. It, to make us not think that they're an alien. Uh, I, maybe they're just trying to scare us or I have no idea. It, it, it just boggles my mind when I get these. Well, my problem with that idea is that it, it, I, if it was just current now, I could see them maybe zoning in on our culture and saying, oh, they're afraid of vampires. Let's take the guise of a, flying bat vampire, but this goes back maybe 40, 50,000 years, all told, if you count the caveman paintings. Uh, if you count, and always, always, the demon of the wind with the Assyrians, the, um, uh, the, the Hittites, all of them have this thing that looks like a moth man. One of them even has the double wings, almost like a dragonfly moth man, uh, and that's the only difference. And um, so whatever this thing is, I think that is its natural shape. Yeah, that is, what kind of puzzles me when you go to Point Pleasant, okay, that there were sightings of UFOs in the area. Then there was the Mothman creature. Then it was the men in black. And I have my own theory about the men in black, you know, driving up in their old brand new looking cars, wearing suits of 10 years or 20 years uh, out of date, the slicked hair, the dark sunglasses. Again, I think about, well, maybe whatever is watching us out there thinks that's how we are right now because our radio waves and TV waves take years to reach out in space. We're talking tens or more, 20, 30, 50, 100 years to get out there. Maybe that's what they think we are. That's true. Their image of how we dress or behave would be out of date. You're quite right. Except that they also look like that in the 60s when we actually did dress like that. Well, maybe they, 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 they caught on from the 50s to the 60s. I have no idea. It just seemed really, really weird, you know, that these... It does. The, the UFO uh, sightings... It, 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 it's, it's, um, by the way, they didn't just see UFO lights uh, in Point Pleasant or near there. In another town not far away, um, a woman with some kids, school kids, uh, they saw what looked like they thought was a jet going down or a plane. They saw these lights in the sky, and they, they, they came down, and they thought, oh, my God, there was a uh, crash. So they went to help, and as they neared what they thought was the crash, they realized it wasn't a crash airplane. It was some kind of UFO that was, had landed there, and then they saw this creature. It was very tall. It was dark. It had glowing red eyes, and it had these uh, leather-like wings instead of arms, and they said that the, the head was shaped like a spade on a card, you know, like a playing card spade, uh -huh. and uh, th they fled in panic. So now here you have a direct correlation of one of these Mothman things with a UFO. So again, are they from another world? That is the possibility, because again, I, I just think a lot of these sightings of, you know, uh, Mothman, there's always been a lot of sightings in that area of UFOs in, in this, roughly the same time frame. I don't know if you've investigated that. Well, actually, I have. I mean, I'm, I've been trying to, in my book, I was trying to find some answers, some correlations. And the truth of the matter is, the correlations are vague at best. Point Pleasant's probably the best example. There was a UFO sighting, as I just related. There were animal mutilations in that area. 
Then the Mothman appeared, and the sightings began to rise and rise and rise until literally a few hundred people saw this thing or claimed to have at different times in different locations. There was the electronic disruptions of television, car, uh, the car radio, uh, dispatcher radio, and a cop car, that, uh, the deputy that went to the TNT area to uh, look for the Mothman because of what the kids had described, the teenagers had described. <clears throat> And he fled the area because it was making strange squeaks and squawks, and he couldn't get back to the station via the radio, and he felt too alone. So he left. But uh, the, uh, So we, we have UFO sighting, the sighting of the creature near the UFO. We have animal mutilations, and we have electronic disruptions. And we have the strange character, Indrid Cole, who's flying around in what looks like the glass lampshade of an oil lamp that's <laughs> but it's glowing. And uh, I mean that was the shape of it. It didn't. It wasn't transparent, like you know, like a, uh, an oil lampshade. But uh, so there seems to be a very strong correlation with UFOs there. So I'm inclined to think it is either something like that, or it's a trans-dimensional being. I don't think it's a native cryptid, cryptid of Earth itself. I don't think it's like say a Bigfoot or a, or, or an animal like that, a chupacabra or something. I think it's either alien or it's trans-dimensional because it's defying the laws of physics it is now we need to go on break here in about one minute uh, so if you want to get a cup of java a cup of tea or whatever relax we'll be back about uh, four minutes after the top of the hour uh, top of the hour james Chrisbaum is going to give us the paranormal earth news trucker news so stay tuned we're going to be back with rob talking about mothman and by the way you need to go on to amazon check out his books you need to check out the one uh, is the, uh, well, Mysteries of Mothman while you're checking out all his books. We'll be back in about a flash or two. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the world paranormal news with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. This is Night Dreams Talk Radio Network News. I'm James Creechbaum, and here's a possible Chicago Mothman recently has been observed in Rosemont, Illinois. Uh, here's the witness statement. I was sitting in my car waiting my next Uber Lyft call. I was parked on the side of the road near Tollbooth Plaza 31. It is a spot many drivers share. Drivers like to park to be close to the O'Hare terminals which allows us to pick up rides from the airport. 
As I was sitting there, fiddling around in my car, I saw something walk out of the woods, a tree line. It was a tall creature, about six to seven feet tall, and kind of hunched.